The last of the biogeochemical cycles we'll be talking about this chapter is the phosphorus cycle. I like to do this one last because in a lot of ways this is the simplest cycle that we've talked about so far. The reason this one's easy is if you look up here at the atmosphere part of the cycle, there are no arrows coming towards or leaving from the atmosphere, which means there is no atmospheric stage to the phosphorus cycle. Everything is taking place either in the soil or in the water, you know, somewhere on the ground that keeps it out of the atmosphere. And I think the complicated parts of the nitrogen cycle and the carbon cycle are what moves those two uh, particular elements to or from the atmosphere. So the key to this one is this stuff. It's all in, as it calls in this diagram, the mineable rocks. It's all in the minerals. There's two ways that phosphorus gets out of the minerals. One of the ways is weathering. The other one is mining. Uh, the weathering idea could be erosion, you know, anything that's breaking down those rocks and making the phosphorus available. The uh, material that's weathered out of the rocks is either going to go into rivers or directly into the soil. When it's in the soil, it gets uh, uptake into land plants, and then those plants are eaten by consumers. So that's ultimately the way that we get all the phosphorus that we need. It comes from the vegetables and things that you are consuming. Those consumers then can eventually decompose and go back to the soil, and that kind of creates its own little mini cycle over on the side. It's the same general approach in the ocean. You know, the uh, producers are getting it from the water itself, and then they're eaten by consumers, which eventually die, go down to decomposers, and that keeps on going in its own little cycle as well. So the phosphorus cycle is ultimately pretty simple compared to the other two. Uh, just like in the previous cycles, we always have to talk about human impact as the last stage. You can see here, fertilizers and detergents is the main way that people impact this cycle. Uh, if you use dish detergent, you know, uh, laundry detergent, things like that at home, that contains a lot of phosphorus in it. And that eventually has to go through a wastewater treatment plant in order to get removed from the water before that water can be released into the environment. Uh, like anything else, too much of a good thing becomes a bad thing. You know, phosphorus is required for plants to be healthy, but a lot of it really allows algae to take off and do very, very, very well. Uh, so well, actually, that it can deplete a lot of the oxygen from an environment because it's thriving so much. Uh, so phosphorus is one of those things that people are producing in high amounts, but we do have to be careful about how much of it we're releasing into the environment because it is something that should be released slowly. If you think about how it's originally getting there naturally, it's coming out of these mineable rocks, it's coming out of minerals, basically, that are broken down through weathering. So as people go through and release things faster, we kind of unbalance this cycle a little bit. Um, overall, I think this is probably the simplest one, just because, again, there is none of that atmospheric stage in the phosphorus cycle. So this concludes our study of the biogeochemical cycles. Remember, we have water, carbon, nitrogen, and phosphorus. As always, thank you for watching.